Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. You're welcome to subscribe, you know, the usual share, like. And um, today, you must be so fed up of Meghan Markle, but there are so many different aspects to what she is, what she's been through, why she decided to do it. And somebody sent me an email and they said, do you know how many royals, no, not how many royals, how many people have declined um, marrying royalty or the dynasty? She didn't give me any names or, and I tried to find out who had actually declined marrying into royalty and I couldn't find any. I'd found, I found people who had married royalty and were spurned, but not actually people who had um, declined marriage to a royal to royalty. So, if you could, if you know of any um, women who actually declined to marry royalty, please put them in the comments. I'd really be interested to know. You can do my homework for me. Um, what was interesting is that can you imagine if Prince Harry said to um, Meghan Markle got down on one knee and said, oh, Ma Meghan, will you marry me? And she says no. I mean, you see it sometimes on the TV, but even then it's because maybe they've had an argument or whatever reason um, a woman declines. It's usually because she, there's something amiss why she won't decline. But when you are meant to be in love and somebody gets down on their knee to propose or they propose in any way can you imagine how embarrassing it would be for that woman to say oh no I don't want to marry you especially if he's a prince so I cannot imagine I don't know if it took her as surprise um, and she didn't have time to think about it. Sometimes I can imagine somebody like Prince Harris. I mean, he, Prince Harry, he is really a nice bloke. And I would imagine that her instant reaction was pride. You know, she felt proud of the moment. She was complimented. She was shocked. She was surprised. All of those kind of emotions she would have gone through. A prince. Proposing to me? I mean, I'm Meghan Markle. I'm an American. I'm not British. I've been divorced. You know, how can he offer to marry me? And then in that split second, you would feel excited and you would think, wow, Prince Harry, he's proposing to me? And then, of course, you would say, yes, of course, I love you. Of course, I'll marry you. And in that moment, you won't think of what is to come. In that moment, you're going to think the world is a fair place. You're going to think the world is somewhere where we've moved on, we've evolved. And you're not going to think that your colour or your past is going to be a problem. But Harry, I don't know if Harry would have even known the extent because I'd imagine that Harry would say to her, Meghan, you know, being in the royal family isn't easy. You know, there are we are going to face problems, but if we face them, if we, if we face them together, we're going to be okay. I can imagine him reassuring her, but I can't imagine him perceiving the extent of what has gone on since. And I don't think as much as he is the Prince of um, Sussex, I don't think he's in a position to protect her. I mean, when you marry someone, you marry them because you want to feel protected. And you would think that somebody of that status would be able to protect you. But you're out of the, the realm of protection. Yes, he can protect you physically. And they've probably got their armed arms that can protect you physically. But who can protect you psychologically? Who can protect you from the arrows, the darts, the evilness, the anger, the, the spurning? Who can protect you from that? 
Harry definitely cannot. Anyway, it forced me to look at all the women who had considered to marry, as they've said, above their station. And Meghan Markle isn't the first and she won't be the last. We have Catherine de Vallas, we have Jakarta de saint paul we have Sicily of York, we have Mary the French Queen, we have Catherine Willoughby, Frances Blandon, Lady May Gray and Catherine Swinford. And I'm going to put the links below so you can look into their relationships, who they married and how it panned out. You've, we've got the royal women who were spurned, spurned wives. We've got Catherine the Great. We've got Queen Isabella, otherwise known, known as the She-Wolf of France. We have Tamara of Georgia. We have Caroline of Brunswick. And we have Princess Diana. Now, I think Princess Diana is the most recent. And if anything rang bells, the death of Princess Diana should have rang bells. I'm sh maybe if Princess Diana didn't die the way she she did, you know, everybody's on the lookout. So they have to keep Meghan Markle safe. So actually, Princess Diana is a martyr, is a martyr of what can happen to the royals if you don't behave, if you're a spurned individual. And she was spurned according to the media. They cast her out. Um, and you have to remember that Meghan Markle wasn't the first um, black um, woman who married into royalty, you know. So let's not get it twisted. We have Princess Charlotte. She's got a very long name. Sophia Charlotte of mecklenburg strelitz She married King George III, who reigned between 1760 and 1820. And you can see all of their photographs if you Google it. So she's otherwise known as Queen Charlotte. And yeah, so another black queen. I think she was mixed race as well. But it's not a big deal. It's not nothing new. So I don't know why in 2020 it seemed as though it's such a big thing. Anyway, um, Christina of Denmark. Um, She's also, oh, she was, she was a woman who declined to get married, Christina of Denmark, but I didn't really, I couldn't really find much on it. So like I said, if you know of any more women who um, declined marriage to royalty or to the dynasty, please let me know, because it takes a lot of courage to marry into royalty. You are an open book. You might as well live in a glass house. Um, it's not easy. And no love. I'd, it cannot be love that gets you through. It has to. It just has to be a decision. It has to be something that you decide to do regardless. Because love, once all of those arrows start hitting, the love is going to diminish. So it needs to be something stronger than love that will get them through. Um, we also have the Royal Marriages Act that I found out. I didn't know about that. And that came out in 1772, and it was an Act of Parliament of Great Britain, which prescribed the conditions under which members of the British royal family could contract a valid marriage in order to guard against marriages that could diminish the status of the royal house. The right of veto vested in sovereign by this Act provoked severe adverse criticism at the time of its passage. But you know what's interesting? All of these people are dissing Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, but they can't get married without the permission and consent of the reigning monarch, the Queen. So by dissing and disrespecting the um, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, they're actually disrespecting the Queen. So they better be careful. It was repealed as a result of the 2011 Perth Agreement, which came into force on the 26th of March 2015 under the succession of the Crown Court Act, no, the Crown Act 2013. The first six people in the line of succession needed permission to marry if they and their descendants are to remain in the line of succession. 
The Act said that no descendant of King George II, male or female, other than the issue of princesses who had married or might thereafter marry into foreign families, could marry without the consent of the reigning monarch. Signified under the great seal and declared in council, that consent was to be set out in the licence and in the register of the marriage and entered in the books of the Privy Council. Any marriage contracted without the consent of the monarch was to be null and void. So, these people had better be careful. I don't know who their loyalties are. It's definitely not to the Queen. Because if it was to the Queen, they would keep their mouths shut and their opinions to themselves. Because she has endorsed their marriage. And so they should be able to live in peace and harmony without public ridicule and dissension. However, it continues. Any member of the royal family over the age of 25 who, has, who had been refused the sovereign's consent could marry one year after giving notice to the Privy Council of their intention so to marry unless both Houses of Parliament expressly declared their disapproval. <clears throat> there is, however, no... Oh, unless, sorry, the intonation there is wrong. Let me read that bit again. However, any member of the royal family over the age of 25 who has been refused the sovereign's consent could marry one year after giving notice to the Privy Council of their intention to marry, unless both Houses of Parliament expressly declared their disapproval. That wasn't the case with Harry and Meghan. And apparently there's been no instance in which the sovereign's formal consent in council has been refused. The Act further made it a crime to perform or participate in an illegal marriage of any member of the royal family. I don't understand what that means. If anybody can tell me what an illegal marriage means. Not unless it means that somebody got married into royalty without the permission of the monarch. Maybe that's what it means. In that sense, I guess it's illegal. But again, this provision was repealed by the Criminal Law Act 1967, 1967. For centuries, there have been certain members of the monarchy who have married for love, despite their choices not being conventional. And since Prince Harry and Meghan Markle announced their engagement, many have commented that this union is, in some way or another, changing history. And according to Time magazine, the union is groundbreaking. But the thing is, it's not groundbreaking. It's happened, like I said, with Prince Charlotte. We've had people, um, we've got divorces in the in royalty. So it's not that groundbreaking. I don't know why it's considered so, so, um, and a lot of royalties, they haven't even married Brits. Why aren't they marrying Brits? They're marrying German, they're marrying the French, Americans. They're not marrying their own Brits. Why not? Ask yourself that question. Um, Meghan Markle is admittedly not the traditional choice for Prince Harry. She does not come close to the English aristocracy. She's American. She's mixed race and had a Catholic education. However, this non-conformist choice of a royal wife is not a new one. Arguably, ground has been broken on this subject centuries before, even before Elizabeth Woodfield tempted tempted the gregarious and hot-headed hot -headed Edward IV into matrimony. Tempted. Mm, sounds a bit like Delilah-ish, doesn't it? Anyway, for those in the higher echelons of society in the Tudor period, a good marriage was one that brought about mutual prosperity and advancement in status or strengthened alliances. Romantic love was frowned upon and was certainly no basis for matrimony, unlike today. Back in the day, you didn't have to love anyone, you know. It was just about a business agreement, They whatever, like they said. 
It was about strengthening finances, strengthening alliances, advancement in status. That's what it was about. This romantic love business wasn't in it at all. And if you didn't, you know, and that's why, you know, the families had to kind of agree. And that's why I don't know if any of you saw um, Little Women. And they tried to palm them off. It was just so lucky that they managed to get rich men. But they came from, they were commoners and they were frowned upon and they had a hard time. So it's been going on for ages. I don't know why it's such a big deal now. Honestly, I don't, you know what I think? I think people haven't got anything better to do. They haven't got anything to occupy their minds. They're bored. That's what I think. I think people are bored. And so they're looking for anything to get their teeth into and ravage it and tear it apart and scrutinise it. And because they're not happy, they're not happy people. Happy people don't go around slagging people off and being so bitter. That Piers Morgan, oh, I used to think he was a half-decent bloke. But honestly, he's talking about he used he was friends with Meghan Markle for 18 months and they even went into the pub together and had a chat. And ever since she's known Prince Harry, she doesn't speak to him. She's blocked him. That's probably because he's got his journalist hat on and he's just trying to dig into their business. That's probably why he's not coming and approaching her in a sincere way. That's probably why she's blocked him. And the way he behaves is absolutely disgusting. I don't know who the hell he thinks he is. But good for her if she's blocked him. Who the hell is he? Give me a break. And he's got the audacity to say, did he say he said something about she's, um, I'm sure he would have used the word uppity if he could, but he didn't use that word. He used um, another phrase that, you know, um, she doesn't want to go attend to the royal family. She's doing it by conference. You know, she hasn't got time to come to, and you know, separating families and all that crap. You think if Prince Harry didn't want to distance himself because of all the crap, he would? Of course he wouldn't. He probably, if he loves Meghan, he feels her pain as much as if it was his own pain. And the type of person he is, he does feel her pain. And he's not going to put her through it. And it's great that he's not one of these little followers who says, oh, you better come, Meghan, and not care about her feelings. You better come and see the Queen. It is the Queen. We've got to go and stand in conference. We've got to speak to the Queen. So you better come or else it's not going to look good. No, he's not doing that. He's standing by her like a proper husband. He could be operating in so many different ways. And when you see them together, you don't see conflict, you don't see anger, you don't see frustration, you see happiness. So you know that they're working in partnership on the decisions that they make. What else? So a topic that no one talks about. Oh, this is what this lady wrote to me. She said, a topic that no one talks about is how many people ran from marriages to the royals. No one focused on those who declined to marry into that dynasty. She, meaning Meghan Markle, was warned. She was not poor. She didn't need his money. The problem is that her husband knew, but, hadn't, but no reassurance can prepare a potential wife. She didn't put that bit. Uh, that that was must have been some of my thinking. Going right back to King Henry the Eighth, there were those among the European nobility that de that politely declined marrying with this dynasty. And I think I think Edward was the one that abdicated. He married uh, someone who was twice divorced. It's not a big deal. So let me see. Um, we've got King Edward who married Wallace Simpson. She was twice divorced. Um, we've got Princess Margaret, she was divorced. We've got three of the four of um, Queen Elizabeth's children who are divorced. 1992, Prince Anne remarried, she was a divorcee. 1996, Prince Charles divorced and married um, Camilla Barker, Bo Parker Bowles, who was also a divorcee. So what is, what is the problem? 
So are they saying that she should have declined the marriage? Is that what people would have preferred? Would they have preferred, rather than call her uppity, would they have preferred that she knew her place and declined the prince? Maybe that's what they had hoped, that she would think, oh no, I can't marry the prince, I'm not worthy. But what she's done is shown she is worthy. She has value. That's what she's done. She's shown she's a black woman and she has value and she has self-worth. They don't like that. They don't like black people who have got self-worth and who value themselves. Oh no, you're not supposed to be like that. You're supposed to be down there. And if you dare value yourself and if you dare have an air of confidence, oh my God, oh, you're uppity, know your place. How dare you? That is what she has to contend with. She's risen above her station. She doesn't know her place. She's uppity. Ah, oh dear. Let me see what else I've got here. If you love someone, this is one of my notes. If you love someone, you know what the institution is like. Oh, this was something I was thinking. Okay, Prince Harry. I don't know if he is naive. But I did wonder if you love someone and you know what the institution, i.e. the royal institution, is like, why would you put your spouse through that? Why would you want to marry her if you know, you know, what she is going to face, knowing the racism that exists and these, the hierarchy that exists? So um, maybe he thought it would be different. Maybe he thought people had moved on. Maybe he thought, you know, the world had evolved. But we just see how closed-minded the world is. Um, like I said, the monarch would not recognise the marriage of any divorced people whose ex-spouse was still living prior to 2002. So they've been there's been a reprieve, and I think... You know, like I said, we've got a lot of royals who are divorced. And it's not even that, though, is it? I think they harp on the fact that she's American. I don't know why, because it's not like, how many, how long ago is it since we've had a Brit in royal? Half of the Brits, half of the bloody royals, they've all got um, foreign backgrounds. So how dare they? How hypocritical. Go and check their backgrounds. Germany, France, goodness knows where. They're definitely not born and bred blue blood Brits. They're not. So they've got a bloody nerve. And after taking, oh, and after hiding all the history of royalty in the past, they've got the audacity to make out like Meghan Markle is not worthy to be where she is. Of course she is. So... Did I stray from the point? Maybe I did. But all I'm trying to say is, you know, yes, she's a black woman. She's American. She's a divorcee. Should she have really, when Harry said to her, I love you, Meghan Markle, will you marry me? Should she have tossed her oh no, I can't marry you. Or she could have said, Oh no, I can't marry, I'm not worthy. Oh me, I'm a divorcee, I'm, I'm, I'm black, I'm coloured. I can't marry you, Harry. I love you, but I can't marry you. Oh no. What would people say? She could have done that. People would have loved that. They would have said, oh yeah, she, she knows her place. And then all the headlines, Meghan Markle. They, they still find something nasty to say. But oh, Meghan Markle. Not worthy enough to marry our prince. Doesn't feel as though she's worthy. She rejected the prince. She's rejected the queen. She's rejected the institution. Ah, oh, they'd have something else to say. So Meghan Markle is living her life. She's accepted her prince. Actually, she's got the prince, the armour, the crown, the jewel. She's got everything. She's living the dream. Good luck to her. Very well done. That's all I've got to say. Bye-bye.